everyone welcome again to my youtube channel it's your girl farida thank you for watching my previous video if you haven't already watched it make sure to go and watch it like and subscribe and stay tuned for today's video in today's video we claim every doubt that is about whether you can work in the uk and use the money from working in the uk to fund your tuition fees uh, many international students have been asking this question and in today's video we claim every doubt that is about whether you can work in the uk and you can fund your tuition fees from working in the UK. Looking at case study tuition fees from four different universities, uh, we're looking at case study tuition fees from the University of East London, which is the university that I attend, and three other universities. The tuition fees at my university are £12,700. The tuition fees at Queen Mary University of London are £20,850. The tuition fees at London School of Economics are £21,570. And the tuition fees at King's College London are £23,550. The next thing that we'll be looking at are wages. In the UK, the wages are governed by the government and we have the national minimum wage and the national living wage, which is dependent on your age. So if you're an apprentice, your national minimum wage will be £4.15. If you're under 18, your national minimum wage will be £4.55. If you're between the ages of 18 to 20 your minimum wage will be six pounds and 45 pence if you're between the ages of 21 to 24 your national minimum wage will be eight pounds and 20 pence if you're above 25 years of age your national minimum wage will be eight pounds and 72 pence so that is how it is governed by the government many jobs such as working in the grocery store working in the supermarket working in retail stores tend to offer the national minimum wage which means that if you're between the ages of 18 to 20, 21 to 24, over 25, you usually get the national minimum wage and nothing above that and nothing below that also. However, it is possible to get considerably higher than the national minimum wage. There are employers that will offer you above the national minimum wage. Uh, an, an employer for example, uh, Lidl for example, which is a, a grocery store in, in many parts of London and in the UK, offers its employers between £10.55 to £10.75 and up to £11.70 for those within the M25 area in, in London. Uh, it is also possible to get higher wages depending on what jobs you're doing, depending on the kind of employer you work for. But then the set standard is that you should always get the national minimum wage and nothing below that. As an international student, when you come here as a student and you decide to work part-time, you should make sure that whatever job you're doing, you should make sure that whatever job you're doing guarantees you the national minimum wage. Many people tend to work in cash and land jobs that trample upon their rights. As an international student, don't come here to be um, a modern slave to some employers that think that we are international students and you're dumb and they can be, and, and because of that they can ride upon your rights. So make sure that you stand up for your rights and work for the right employers and for every job you do make sure that it is well documented. Make sure that every job that you do is well documented through your national insurance number. The next thing that we'll look at is how many hours you can work as an international student. As an international student, once you get your biometric residence permit, once your visa is granted, it will be clearly stated that you have a work limit and you can only work 20 hours per week during term time and nothing above that. If you work above 20 hours per week during term time, you'll be breaking the conditions of your tier 4 visa, which may affect you later. As an international student, the law grants you the right to work full-time during school holidays. You can work full-time during the Christmas holidays, the Easter holidays, and the summer holidays, which amounts up to 16 weeks. The Christmas holidays is usually for two weeks, the Easter holidays also for two weeks, and the summer holidays for about 12 weeks. So approximately about 16 weeks of holiday during each year of study in the UK. The next thing that we'll also look at is what how much you can potentially earn if you work in the UK. So if you're working part-time and your wages are nine pounds per hour for every shift that you do, from working nine pounds per hour for 20 hours per week, that means you're doing 20 times nine, which is equal to 180 pounds per week. So for every week you're getting 180 pounds per week, and for every month, 720 pounds per month. If if your job pays you 10 pounds per hour that means you're working 10 pounds per hour for 20 out for 20 hours per week and getting paid 200 pounds per week which means you're getting paid 800 pounds per month but if you're getting paid the national minimum wage say you're between the ages of 
21 to 24 years of old. Say, say you're between the ages of 21 to 24 years of age and you're getting paid £8.20 per hour. That means for 20 hours of work each week, you gain one, £164 pounds per week and £656 pounds per month. That is exactly how much you'll be able to get during the same time. Nothing below that, nothing above that. If that is the wages that you've been offered by your employer, it is highly possible to get higher paid jobs depending on your skill and experience. So that is dependent, dependent on each individual. But for this video, the, the focus will be mainly to see if you can actually afford to pay your tuition fees by working part-time, doing same time and full-time during the holidays based on the amount that we've listed earlier. The first holiday you will have as an international student will be the Christmas holidays, which will last for about two weeks. If in these two weeks you work full-time, and your wages are eight pounds and twenty eight pounds twenty pence per hour. That means you're getting paid eight pounds and twenty pence per hour times how many hours you work. And if you take the example of the fact that you're working full time during this period, so let's say you're working forty five hours during this two weeks period, forty five hours of work will be three hundred and sixty nine pounds per week. For two weeks, you only get paid seven hundred and thirty eight pounds for two weeks. So it's pounds for two weeks. The next holiday you will have. As an international student will be the Easter holidays. It is usually the case that after the Easter break, you have exams at university. It will not be advisable for you to work full time during this period because immediately after two weeks, you have exams at university. So it will be best that during these two weeks of holiday, you also keep working part time because during that period, you'll be able to work part time and also prepare for your exams. So let's say during these two weeks holiday, you have, you've also worked part-time so that means your wages remain the same next holiday you have is the summer holidays the summer holidays usually last for longer and that is the time that you can actually work more if you decide to work more if in the summer holidays you also decide to work and you decide to work full-time during the summer holidays that means you'll be earning 369 pounds per week at the rate of 820 pounds per hour if you decide to work 45 hours per week Working full time during the summer holidays and any three six nine pounds per week will mean that at the end of twelve weeks of the summer holidays, you will potentially have four thousand four hundred and twenty eight pounds. The next thing we'll do now is to add everything that you could potentially earn from working full time during the holidays to see how much you will actually amount to. From working during the Christmas holidays, the Easter holidays, and the summer holidays, that is two weeks plus two weeks plus 12 weeks, that is 16 weeks. So 16 weeks of work will mean that at the end of 16 weeks, your salary will be £4,904 for the whole of 16 weeks. If you work part-time for the whole of 30 weeks during the same time, your whole savings or your salary will be £4,950. If you add that £4,950 to, to every... To, to, if you add the £4,950 to, to all of the amounts you've earned during the holidays, that would be £4,950 plus £5,904. In, in total, that would be £10,854. That is still not up to your tax free amount of £12,500. So that means all of the amounts you'd have earned during term time and during the holidays will still not be subject to tax. So that is £10,854 for working during term time and part time. It is important to note that you only have that amount. If you have not paid for accommodation, you've not paid for food, you've not paid for transport, you've not paid for books, you've not paid for anything, like you've literally just gone to work. You only have that amount if you've actually like just worked in a place that is outside of your outside of your house. That means you've not even had to get on the train at all. You've not gone anywhere, you've not had fun, you've not done anything extracurricular, you've just been going to uni and going to work. It will only be possible to have that amount if you've not done anything but go to uni and go to work and not bought a single thing. That is the amount you have, and that amount is not even up to the tuition fees at my university, it's not up to the tuition fees at Queen Mary University of London, it's not up to the tuition fees at King's College London, it's not up to the tuition fees at London School of Economics. So that you only have that amount if you've actually not done anything else, and that amount that you actually have will, will still not be enough to pay your tuition fees. So that is the essence of this video, to show you that you can still not afford to pay your tuition fees by just working part-time, during term time, and full-time during the holidays. You will need the help and support of parents, your family, your friends, to actually pay your tuition fees because you can't do this alone. You, know, you can't come to the UK hoping that um once I've got my visa, I'll be able to work in the UK and from there I'll be able to pay my accommodation, pay for transport, pay for food, go to work, pay my tuition fees. That is so impossible. Like that is not possible at all. Don't deceive yourself. 
don't deceive yourself by coming to this country believing that you can do it that you're going to um come to this country to work 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 pay your tuition fees and still achieve good grades at university because at some point it will take a toll on you it will affect your mental health because you'll be working so much you'll be worried about your tuition fees you'll be worried whether things will go on rise you'll be working so much to pay your tuition fees that you won't be focusing so much on your education and, and the opens of coming to the uk to study the whole point of coming to UK on a tier 4 student visa is that you're able to study. It is called a tier 4 student visa because you're here to study and not here to actually work. The belief when your visa was granted is that you already have the money, that you're actually able to afford to come to uni, that you're actually able to afford living costs, you're able to afford your tuition costs, and not, be, and not, and not based on the fact that um, the home office believes that you can work and be able to work and save to pay your your tuition cost. You can't you can't afford to pay your tuition fees by working part time during term time and full time during the holidays. It is literally impossible. Don't make the mistakes that other people have already made by coming to this country with the hope that they'll be able to work um, during term time and through that be able to afford their tuition fees. Before you come to this country, make sure that you plan it very well, plan very well, prepare very well, and make sure that it is the best decision for you. Don't sell your houses. Don't sell your property. Don't sell your cars. Don't sell your valuables just because you want to come to this country to study. Don't put yourself in emotional stress by coming to this country to study in the hopes that you'll be able to get part-time job or full-time jobs so to fund your tuition fees, to fund your living costs because it is literally impossible. If you think by coming here to study you can um, work part-time and from working part-time during term time and full-time during, during the holidays, you'll be able to pay your tuition fees, your living costs. That is not possible at all. That is literally impossible. Think about it very well before you decide to come to the UK to study. Think about it very well. Make sure that it is the best decision for you. And when you're sure it is the best decision for you, only then should you apply to study in the UK. And that, that will be it for today. Thank you very much for watching today's video. If you've enjoyed today's video, make sure to like, subscribe, comment and share. And stay tuned for the next video. Thank you very much. See you again next time. Bye.